Well, good morning to you once again. Thank you so much for still being with us here in morning at NTV as we have zero days to be counted. Now, it matters to be counted is a message that we're going to be continuously echoing to you. Now, speaking of which, we still continue here with conversations in morning at NTV and our tech note this morning is going to be focusing on empowering refugee communities in Uganda and response services for refugees in their settlements. I am Priscilla Regina Naloga. Welcome to our Tech note. Now, to give you a backbone of it, when we look at the global refugee crisis in an ever-present uh, country, continent, and the world, refugees often are fleeing conflict or persecution. They are facing numerous challenges left, right, and center. Now, in Uganda in particular, we host one of the largest refugee populations in the world, approximately 1.6 million refugees. But over the course of time, that statistic has actually increased in number, and these do settle in urban centers as well as rural areas. You do have 28 refugee settlements across this country. Now in 2023, Uganda did receive 98,232 new arrivals, of which 50.7% did arrive through the border entry points, mainly in Chisoro, in Lokung, and Bundibujo, and then 49.3% were received here in Kampala. Now these figures perhaps clarify just for the country hosts that the largest number of refugees in Africa, the third largest in the world, which is one straining the capacity and sustainability of refugee hosting uh, communities, especially when it comes to approaches in which you can be able to support them and their livelihoods. And then you also get to look at other things such as social economic welfare and the well-being, holistic well-being of the refugees that are living in their host communities. What does it look like as of today in the present day? So we do have some beautiful ladies that are here to join us on this conversation. I am joined by Siham. She is with the Refugee Women's Leadership Leaders Network. We also do have Charity from the same organizations and Uganet is also on this table and Rona is going to be representing them. But I will allow them their own salutations, then we get into the discussion for the morning. I'll start with my immediate left. Siham, good morning. Good morning, Madam Priscilla. Uh, this is Siham the executive director of Refugee Women Leaders Network based in Kampala and uh, settlements. Uh, as we know, Uganda is hosting uh, approximately 1.6 million refugees. And uh, in all that, we made, this is the first refugee-led women organization is, and it is Refugee Women Network. Okay, all right. Speaking of networks, we do have another network on the table. Rona? Uh, good morning, Priscilla. Uh, good morning, dear viewers. My name is Rona Babuetera. I head the gender department at Uganet, and uh, Uganet is a social justice organization. And we do offer response services to uh, women, uh, girls, and um, yeah, today in the capacity of uh, the services that we offer to refugee women and girls. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. And we're also joined by Charity. Good morning to you. Oh, yes. Good morning, Priscilla, and uh, good morning, dear viewers. My name is Lenia Charity Kevin. I'm the <coughs> advocacy strategist at uh, Refugee Women Leaders Network, and uh, it's an absolute pleasure for me today to be here to share what we do at this network. All right. Yes. We are always having this discussion regarding refugees, but not necessarily speaking to one who has been in that journey. And so, privileged to have one that has walked the mile as a refugee, Siham. Uh, you have been a refugee and now you are well settled and empowering other refugees such as yourself. Let's talk about your journey and how you became to attain the status of refugee and what has that looked like for you over the course of time? Uh, thank you, Bursella. Uh, this is a long journey and it needs a long recall. It was, it was 2008 when I reached out to Uganda with one, uh, with a our family and uh, we came for refuge for Uganda and that time Uganda hospitality cannot be defined just in one day as you see Uganda is now second largest country hosting the whole refugees so my journey was started from uh, my country to 
Kenya border against Uganda border until I settled to Kambala. And I came when I was too young, and I came with my father, who also died here in Uganda. And uh, that time, I was too young, I can't say a lot, but I settled and right now we are impacting other refugees. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Thank you so much for sharing your journey. Uh, I'd like to bring in Lena in this uh, particular conversation, referring to the Uganda's Refugee Act of 2006. When it was launched, of course, it was recognizing the population which in reality had already existed. And so let's talk about the elements that were meant to be used to support the refugees and their settlements uh, in Uganda. Um, thank you so much, dear Priscilla. In regards to the 2006 Act, uh, besides the formulation of this legislation, we get to understand that uh, there are quite a number of challenges in regards to implementation. Yes, uh, in regards to the work that we do right now, that is combating SGBV within the refugee communities, this Act under Section 33 provides um, protection of refugee women, an affirmative action can be taken in case of discrimination against a refugee woman or if this lady has been violated, you know. And uh, I would say that there are different elements to this act, basically the protection of the refugees, access <laughs> to their services, you know. and. Uh, what are the refugee rights in the country? How do they access these rights? All, this is all implemented in this particular act. But now, regardless of the fact that the act is here, there are still very many challenges, especially when it comes to the limited resources. And I would say even when we are combating sexual gender-based violence within the refugee communities, the culture, the deep rooted social culture factors um, acts as an obstacle to the work that we are doing but yet again I appreciate the fact that the act was put in place. Okay, Rana, uh, you are one that works with this kind of people on a daily basis, especially mm -hmm. when we look at gender-based violence that she has brought about sexually. Uh, and one of the things that you are strong and vocal about is the fact that our cultural stems mm -hmm. have contributed to what we are as a society as far as uh, gender-based violence is concerned. How are you actually helping to revert that? Because Culture is culture, it's part of Africa, mm -hmm. we cannot run away from it, and yet it's contributing to things like female um, genital mutilation, among other things, uh, disadvantaging especially the woman. Yeah, thank you so much Priscilla. Uh, just building on what uh, Lenny has said, uh, one thing we must appreciate as a country is uh, um, our cultural beliefs, norms and practices live with us. And uh, the fact that uh, there is power imbalance between women and men will always fuel uh, the abuses more and we shall see these abuses happen until we get back to the drawing board and say, yes, our culture is good, our practices are good, mm -hmm. but we can shun those that really uh, create that gap between women and men or cause the violence mm -hmm. to the women and girls. And uh, also, if we could get our communities to believe that uh, normalizing violence isn't okay, then uh, that will be the only time we shall see a change. We do have very good uh, laws in the country. We do have uh, many efforts put in place by the government of Uganda to combat uh, gender-based violence generally and uh, specifically sexual gender-based violence. However, um, with us, the people, still uh, embracing and treasuring the beliefs and practices or norms that cause the violence, uh, we still have uh, a journey still to go 
to see our country protect the women and girls better. Okay. Yeah. Now, speaking of protection of women and girls, uh, Siham, we do have what you have as the Refugee Women Leaders Network, uh, being one of those uh, places that is doing this kind of advocacy work. Let's talk about the network. Um, what's its mandate in the first place? Uh, uh, this uh, Refugee Women Network, we founded first of all 2022 with uh, other refugee women leaders from different backgrounds, such as uh, refugee were Congolese, they were also Somali, they were also South Sudanese, and they were Sudanese. They came up together and we said since there is no women network that impacts down to the refugees uh, matters, why don't we come up with one and create the coalition and impact our community back since we are sharing same challenges and same issues and same resources then uh, that was the reason we we, we came up with the coalition <coughs> and uh, in this network we really um, reached out to all refugee communities who are based both urban and unsettlements. We did last last month assessment with our dear Lenya where we, we had a mapping out and assessment is where refugee women leaders or organizations are and what they do within their uh, organizations mm -hmm. and how they impact or, or, or reach out to the community of refugees. Then we settled out, we found many the list they are not uh, one or two or three, yeah. but uh, this year we succeeded to sub guarantee four of them in the uh, response of SGBV. Uh, and this SGBV today, um, as as Uganda Refugee Response Plan started shown, there is uh, 4,239 number of incidents of SGBV, which is in, in, in the 28 settlements. And that number is not just a small number, it is a, a big high. That means we, we are supposed to come out more, show out more, speak out and and say something and respond and, and uh, to share with the organet, to share with the police that these are the results shown and these are the things which are exist in the settlements and we need to reach out. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. And the network does that and advocates right now for the SGBV and more. Okay. Yeah. Lenia, I know that currently the network is engaged in a six months project and yes. your focus in sexually best, uh, sexually gender best violence. Uh, talk to us about this project. Why did you feel the need to come up with this project and who are you targeting and what phase is, is it at right now? Well, interesting. Um, from the statistics our ED, Siam has just given us you can see that it is extremely imperative to carry out this project with the large numbers that we have in the 28 settlements in Uganda and uh, we noticed that it is really really urgent this is a matter of urgency within the refugee communities and I must say that it has been a roller coaster journey for us and we really need this project to continue you know and that is why we are that is why we are here today and when it comes to the phase of the project i must say that uh, this is the climax because one of the most important things is uh, reaching out to people creating awareness and we found it right to use media you know to create awareness are there victims remember sgbv is like a silent epidemic even the survivors are going to conceal their experiences. But if we came to the media and we said, you know what, this is a space for all of us, let's make this normal. In case you're an SGBV victim, know who to reach out to. Mm -hmm. And when it came to the phases, we've done quite a number of um, advocacy activities, I would call them. Firstly, we had a matching campaign around the areas of Mengo. That was important because we needed to 
let people know what we are doing most importantly secondly we had a convening of the stakeholders and i'm glad that rona here was among them and that is why she was able to join us today convening of these stakeholders we needed to let our particular stakeholders know like the hospital heads from either mulago from mengo hospital from chisenyi we needed to let the police know because they were part of us and then we also had refugee women leaders from different um, refugee settlements or from different refugee organizations from different communities mm -hmm. Sudanese Eritreas uh, Burundi Somalis name it you know and because these are all key stakeholders when it comes to combating SGBV and yet again we had exactly what Siam was talking about I would say we carried out a needs assessment to identify gaps opportunities and this is picking up grassroots organizations you know who can join us in this advocacy but of course our target was the settlements that's why you would find that uh, we carried out this needs assessment in areas of Nachi Valley. That is where, you know, Nachi Valley is one of the refugee settlements. Mm -hmm. We went to our sides of Insingi Row, that is in Western Uganda, mm -hmm. and we had some here in Central. So now you can see from the marching campaign, from convening of the stakeholders, because we needed some policies to be changed, or we needed some policies to be formulated that favors combating SGBV. And then now we had a needs assessment to um, involve grassroots organizations mm. that are basically part of the refugee community because that is where our interest <coughs> is. You know, remember, addressing uh, SGBVU requires a comprehensive system okay. of protection, prevention, and supporting survivors. Okay. All right. Uh, Siham, in that regard, um, of course, we know that uh, sexually based gender violence presents itself in many forms. What have been the most common forms throughout this project? <coughs> uh, first of all, SGBV has in different types or categories, such as uh, one of it is uh, physical abuse, where someone can just come in and, and box you or kick you or any fight, any kind of fight. And another one is uh, emotional abuse or psychological abuse, where they, either you worked for someone and they refuse your money or, or you, you, you want to work, you have qualified documents, but they don't want you, they are putting you down that you, you are not supposed to work because of culture or something related. Uh, it can be also uh, economical abuse, or, uh, it, it is uh, the same as financial abuse. and. Uh, many. So SGBV cannot occur only in refugees which are living in Uganda. Mm -hmm. SGBV can occur any place, any time, and to anyone. Okay. So that's why we have our, our sister on our organic SGBV head here. We, when it happens and to who it happens, we need the services that are there in the country, which are all all free, all those which are near to free, mm -hmm. to get and able to reach out. Mm -hmm. In our stakeholder meeting, we try to reach who is really impacting SGBV, who are our targets. Who then we we, we come up with our sister organet who 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 provide free shelter to SGBV victims or survivors. We also brought uh, refugee law projectors, uh, whom they give free lawyers to SGBV victims. We came up with also, if I'm not wrong, um, police, whom they, they shared with us toll numbers and, and, and they shared that they have SGBV department is in all the settlements, all the regions of Uganda, and it can be reached to them anytime. Okay. So, Rona, as a supporting partner here, um, how does UGANET actually get, get to work um, with these uh, women leaders in order to ensure that they address uh, sexually based gender violence? And so what is your working relationship with them? And then let's talk about those services that you are offering to people. How are you offering those services? What are the services? How are you offering them? And there's always the question of accessibility yes. and yes. affordability. Yes. yes. Yeah, uh, thank you so much, Priscilla. Um, Uganit, like I shared, our core is around uh, social justice and the law. Um, 
We do offer legal aid services, and when I say legal aid, it is uh, purely free services. We do offer these services not only to the Ugandans, but uh, all people that are within our country. For as long as it's a woman, a woman in imminent danger, a woman that has suffered violence, or a girl that has suffered violence, Uganet offers uh, these services. And uh, all the services we do offer at uh, Uganet are free of charge. So um, uh, besides the legal aid services that we offer, we do have um, a GBV shelter home known as uh, the Rising Woman GBV Shelter and Wellness Center. Mm -hmm. And uh, speaking to its uh, name, we do provide uh, rescue and placement to safety of uh, the women and girls both in the public and uh, private uh, spaces where we get uh, information about any woman or girl that has been abused is about to get abused we do reach out to them but this we normally do with the support of police because um, <clears throat> we can't just reach out in uh, people's homes and enter and mm -hmm. pick out anyone but we do normally work with police and uh, we get to rescue these women on rescue we do have uh, that shelter home where we place them and uh, in the shelter we offer quite a number of services and uh, our first and very important service that we offer here is psychological first aid and when we are offering psychological first aid in this we do establish the most immediate needs of the survivors many come to us and their need is where to put ahead with their children their need is something to eat and survive a woman comes in she is about eight uh, months pregnant about to give birth but has been thrown out of the home abandoned by the man is being battered by the man so we do assessments and get to address their most immediate needs as uh, they get into the home and uh, in the process of doing that we also do psychoeducation. Mm -hmm. we give them information we talk to them about uh, their rights about um, uh, the different uh, services available we do the linking uh, part of uh, the survivors to the necessary care because we can't do it all. Mm -hmm. You get a survivor who has been badly battered, mm -hmm. we link them to uh, medical services. Those that require uh, court services, we have the lawyers that offer that. We do get uh, many women that come in and uh, they are so distressed. Mm -hmm. uh, the distress that goes from uh, mild, um, moderate to severe, we get many of them um, sometimes appearing as though they're actually off. So we get into uh, services of uh, psychiatrists to assess them and get to know what exactly they need to calm their mental state. Mm -hmm. And then uh, uh, as we do that, as the cases are being handled by police, we do offer skilling, life skilling. Um, um, we do not give them hefty um, skills. We just do bits of uh, baking, backyard gardening, to keep them uh, busy and uh, active. But also, this we came up with it after realizing that uh, many of the women that uh, are abused are financially dependent on their perpetrators. Mm -hmm. And uh, we do get also cases of very young girls, teenagers, who are unfortunately impregnated by their biological fathers and uh, their cases are really tough. Uh, they will ask you <coughs> questions like, if I keep this child and give birth to it, will it be my sister? Mm. Will it be my child? Mm. What am I supposed to call uh, this child? Mm. So um, um, there's a lot of counseling that uh, yeah. happens at uh, our GBV shelter home. Okay. And um, you also asked about how they access these services. Uh, people get to us um, through police, we get referrals. Mm -hmm. We do get referrals from uh, organizations like theirs. Mm -hmm. We get uh, referrals from 
other organizations that are aware of the services that we provide. Okay. But we also get walk-in clients. Like when we speak uh, to the public like we've done today, we leave our toll-free line. Mm -hmm. They will get to us uh, to find out where we are. Okay. We sit in Nintinda. And uh, others, um, really, they're just calls that come in uh, through individuals. You have clearly tickled someone. What is the toll-free for Uganet? Uh, the toll-free for Uganet is uh, 0800 333 123. Okay. Yes. All right. Uh, Lenia, as uh, the project is definitely time bound yes. uh, but i know that the demand for you know mm. this attention to sexually based gender violence will mm. continue and so it begs the question what's the continuity strategy mm. okay when you say the project is uh, time bound i i feel um, it deeply touches me because I, 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 in my school of thought, I feel there's still a lot that needs to be done, you know. There's still a lot that needs to be done and we definitely cannot stop here. That is why I believe that it is important to enhance synergies, collisions, you know, working together with different organizations. In an event that we won, that is Refugee Women Leaders Network, cannot handle some of these cases, that is when we call in UGANET. Maybe that is when a refugee law project comes in. Mm -hmm. That is when COHEA comes in. That is when NRC comes in, you know. So one of our strategies is uh, enhancing synergies, okay. collisions, collaborations, even with the government. That is why we found it very important to convey in a stakeholders meeting so that they are part of this journey. We just do not want it to stop, okay. but we need it to continue. All right. Well, we'll conclude it with the one whom we started it with, a call to action. And uh, if someone wanted to reach out to the network, how can they do so? Uh, the network doors is open always. We have websites where they can link up. We have uh, other network, network partners where they can uh, reach out. We have also uh, an, uh, down sub sub network <coughs> organizations based in the settlement. So one of the if we can say like two three in in a single row you can connect it to new life planning in in hoima you can connect it with wazesha they are carrying event this week sgbv through this project we in kambala you can reach to us as a Rwan, uh, refugee women network based in in uganda but uh, to add on, if you are an SGBV victim or survivor, kindly reach out to Bullis toll free, which is uh, 08009191195. Uh, they shared with us and give us the permission to, to share to anyone who is a SGBV victim. Okay, all right. Lenya, Rona, and Rihan, thank you so, so much for you the work that you're doing, uh, focusing on women refugees and supporting them uh, to have a better livelihood and improve on their socioeconomic status uh, for the betterment of country at the end of the day. Again, uh, the toll free number for police is 0800199195. You can be able to reach out to that number for any case that you hear is related to sexually based gender violence and they will be able to refer you uh, to any of these networks. This brings us to the end of morning at NTV. Please to be in your company again since this night. So make sure that you sleep tonight where you want to be counted, says Ubos. On behalf of Chris Igeni and myself, Priscilla, Regina, Naroga and the entire team behind the scenes. Thank you so much. And